Today, we're talking about the top five software of 2025. You'll be able to use each one of these at least on Linux, Windows, and Mac OS. Let's get into it. Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Adrian Reddix, and we're talking about some cool free open source software today. So what is open source? Open source is a software that is open. It's free for anybody to use. It has a license. Usually it's like the GNU license. Um, and that the software is for everybody and, and you have to credit, you know, if you're going to use it for different projects. There are a lot of projects out there that you use on a day to day basis that are based on open source software like Chrome. Chrome is based on Chromium. Um, Waterfox, which is based on Firefox. Um, you have a lot of software and a lot of uh, stuff that you use on a day to day basis that has some open source licensing or open source software baked into it. The first thing, the first thing we're going to talk about is OnlyOffice. Now, OnlyOffice and me have worked together in the past. This is not a video that they're sponsoring. I just happen to really like OnlyOffice. It's one of my favorite office suites. Any computer that I have, it has OnlyOffice on it. It does such a great job at what it does. The, the four main things that a lot of people uh, like, uh, a word processor, some type of spreadsheet application, a uh, presentation application, and it also has a PDF application. Now, since I did the last video on OnlyOffice, the PDF has come a long, long way. It's a very robust feature, and I think it's probably one of the best in the suite. One thing about OnlyOffice is that they claim that they are 100% compatible with Microsoft Office. Um, again, I never say 100%, but OnlyOffice is as close to 100% as you can get for a Office suite. It does a lot of the things that um, most, I'm gonna say 99, 98% of um, users will need. Now, it doesn't do some of those really specialized things like Excel does. Excel has some really specialized functions that maybe one to 2% of users use. And it's like some, it, it's some stuff that you, it's some stuff that you won't even notice. But for the average and like a heavy user, OnlyOffice does a great job. It's a nice, smooth program, and it looks a lot like Microsoft Office. It has the ribbon, it has a similar coloration. So anybody who's apprehensive about going from Microsoft Office to OnlyOffice, it looks very similar. It functions very similar, and it doesn't cost a lot of money like a Microsoft Office does, okay? I think OnlyOffice is a great alternative to Microsoft Office. And you can use OnlyOffice on Linux, Windows, Mac OS, iOS, and Android. The second one, the second one is a piece of software called Calibre. Calibre is a ebook management software. What is an ebook management software and why would I need it? Well, not everybody has uh, Kindles or um, paid ebook services or even pay for ebooks. You have so many projects out there that offer free ebooks like uh, Project Gutenberg or the open uh, or internet archive, or it's a couple other different repositories of free eBooks. Sometimes when you get all that on your computer, it's kind of hard to keep it organized. So what Calibre does, it takes that and it helps you organize and keeps everything in order. And also you can get some plugins for it and it takes that experience of um, what you might get on a paid or a premium um, piece of software or service, it takes that idea of management and order and brings it down to a level where people who have ebooks or things like that can keep things organized because a folder with a bunch of different ebooks in it, it's kind of hard to, you know, hey, this is going to be this genre or this is by this author or this is this subject or things like that. So it takes that uh, level of granularity and lets you uh, put it on your own ebooks, right? So you don't have to pay this exorbitant amount for knowledge or entertainment. Calibre is on Mac, Linux, and Windows. The next one, the next one is going to be one for anybody who's trying to start a streaming career or not even a career, just 
they want to stream in their free time. The Stream Deck is a very nice piece of equipment, but sometimes it can be cost prohibitive, especially if you're starting up. But this software is really good. It's called Free Deck. Free Deck is an open source software that acts extremely like the Stream Deck, right? It, it does a lot of the things that Stream Deck does just on a software. You don't have a physical uh, thing. You can get like a, a macro uh, keypad to, to map the different buttons, but you don't necessarily need that. You can have your um, scenes and sound effects and different things already queued up. You can make your stream a very seamless thing. Um, it works with OBS. So what's good about the free deck? Let's say if you're trying to do a streaming thing and you want to see if it's for you, if you even like it, instead of buying all this expensive equipment, you can download the free deck and you can use it and you may love it and you may be like, hey, I want something that is more premium or I want to have a physical thing and still keep free deck. And just like I said before, get one of those keypads and map your buttons out like that. It's a little more work, but it's not extremely complicated. I think with streaming and things becoming more popular, I think tools like this in the open source community is going to be more and more readily available. And for people who are true, who just love open source, I'm one of those people who love open source. Anytime I can do it, I will. Let's take a little quick break. Um, if you are getting any value out of this, please hit the subscribe button. Hit like. It really goes a long way to help me out. And uh, I thank you. Also, if any of these software or any open source software that you use, if you get any benefit from it and you can spare, please consider donating to these projects. That helps with a lot of the expenses that people have or these projects have to keep them going. Because unlike a lot of other products, a lot of these, a lot of this open source stuff is, um, truly a labor of love like um there isn't a big commercial push behind them so anytime you can please consider helping these projects out the next one the next one is something i use in my personal and in my work life and it's called bitwarden bitwarden is a password manager that doesn't sound super sexy but when i tell you that passwords are literally the key to the kingdom you can look at how many um, companies and cities and governments who have been compromised and not all of them have been through bad passwords, but any level of protection that you can put between you and the bad guy is a great thing. We call it uh, defense in layers, right? And so that means you want to put as many layers in between you and whatever's bad out there. And a password manager does that really good. And Bitwarden does it excellent. Um, what it does is, of course, it stores all your passwords. But if you need help creating secure passwords, it'll help you with do that. You can put I know at work we use it for a lot of note taking. It's like almost like a change log or a place where we can put information that we might need in the future. Let's say we went to a building and we fixed a computer this way and it's not a common way that we fix it. Well, let's go back to Bitwarden, add that to it. So if somebody comes in the future and, and, and they're like, hey, how does this work? What happened? You can go and look and it's right there. And it has uh, um, on the enterprise level, but on the personal level, it does uh, a lot of the same things and it's free. They do have a paid version and it has some other encryption stuff that I'm not a lot of people will use. I pay for it. It's like ten dollars a year. Um, but if you see yourself be having to use those extra things, go ahead and do that. But for most people, don't don't buy it. Uh, the free version does a phenomenal job. You can use um, Bitwarden on a lot of browser extensions. I know all the big ones, Chrome, Safari, Opera, and it's a list of other ones that it, you can use it on. And it's on every platform you could possibly think of uh windows linux mac ios android it's everywhere you can use bitwarden any place that you want it not only gives you protection but it also gives you a sense of ease that you know that hey my passwords are safe that nobody's going to get into my bank account or anything like that and compromise it right and 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 take all my money 
password management is a very important thing that everybody who uses the internet should do. The last one is something that's gonna be a little more off the wall. It's called G Comprise or G Comprise. I'm not quite sure how to say it. I think it's French, but it's a open source application for young child learning. When you think of open source, I'm not sure if you actually think of education. I think of maybe like media players or um, audio recorders or office suites. I never think of a program that helps kids learn. Now, if you look at it, it's not like uh, highly refined as far as like the pictures, but for what it does, it's excellent. It gives kids a opportunity to learn um, the basics like numbers and shapes and colors, but it also give kids a chance to learn how a computer works. I think we take that from granted that we had to learn how it works. How does a mouse move? Those little fine motor skills like typing and things like that. And it does a great job of that. Now, I, I have some members of my family, my wife and and um, other people who are teachers that I ask some questions about it. I know that that screen time is a controversial thing when it comes to parenting. To me, I think there's a balance that can be struck between screen time and non screen time, in my opinion. Um, and I, I, and that has to do with, you know, other things. But G Comprise is is a great tool because it takes something that I think a lot of people take for granted. And that's like early childhood education and puts it in a format where um, a lot of people can use it. It doesn't matter if you don't have the money for services like ABC Mouse or Adventure Academy. You can still have something for your kids to learn um, the basics and also learn a little bit about computers. Right. I think it's a great tool. And of course, uh, it's on Windows, Mac, Linux, and the surprise of the bunch, Raspberry Pi. So if you have a Raspberry Pi and you wanna and you wanna throw something on there for your children, G Comprise is the way to go. Guys, that's it. Thanks for joining me. If you like videos like this, this video right here is going to be about office suites. And this video is going to be what YouTube thinks is the best next video for you to view. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Have a good one.